Hello guys and welcome back to the Simply Code programming channel. This is Vikesh and let's get started with today's topic which is about walking through a code Java project using all the different OOPS concept we have learned so far. So in this example, we are going to have a look at a calculator application. And this calculator application supports primarily four different operations like addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. So let's see how do we build that app. So in front of me right now is open the main class. So I have a main app class here, which has a public static void main method. And the first thing we see is a read input class, which is calling a read method. So if you go to the read input class, it has a simple static method here, which is the read method. And it is using the scanner class. If you remember, I talked about the scanner class, which is used to take inputs from the command line from the user. So we initialize the scanner class and we start taking the inputs and whatever the user inputs in terms of the expression let's say the user entered 4 plus 5 or whatever that whole expression gets sent back into this input line as a string and that comes back here in the input expression once we have captured the input expression the next thing we do is divide the input expression in the numbers and the operators basically an expression would be either something like 4 plus 5 into 3 divided by 2 let's say let's say the user entered this expression so this has either numbers or operators so that's what we are doing here we are using the split method of the string api the string class basically and this split method is going to split the numbers and operators into two different string arrays and here i'm providing the split expression that split at every time you encounter one of these symbols so this when you execute this particular statement it is going to return a numbers array which will be uh, created based on this expression so you will get an array with 4 5 3 and 2 and similarly in the uh, operator array you are going to split or pick out the elements every time you receive a number so this operator array is going to hold this plus sign this multiply sign and this divide sign Hope you get the understanding that we are just splitting the whole expression into two different arrays where first array is holding only the numbers and no mathematical expressions and second array is just holding the mathematical operators and no numbers and we'll see why we need to do that in the upcoming lines once i've created the string array i just want to store or convert these string arrays into a queue so i convert this array into a list by calling the array dot as list so this expression is going to return a list and then i'm going to convert this normal list into a linked list and then going to store this linked list into the queue of numbers and i'm going to do exactly the same thing for the operator array as well converting this into a generic list converting that generic list into a linked list and then storing this linked list as a queue so I have an operator's queue and I have a numbers queue. Both of them have been stored into a queue now. And then I'm using the poll method. If you remember the poll method of the queue is used when you want to fetch the first front element, the head element of the queue. So whichever element is sitting at the head of the queue will be taken out the moment you call, call the poll method. So I fetch the first number from the numbers queue. So in this case, four will be fetched here. In this variable and after that i run a loop on the numbers queue and i'm going to run this uh, particular loop till this particular queue is not empty if you see there's a negation here so i'm going to pick up numbers one by one from this numbers queue till the number queue becomes empty and inside the loop i do this exact same poll operation for the operations queue so this operations queue is holding all these mathematical operations like plus star and divide so i'm going to pick the head of it so in this case plus will be picked up and will be stored in this variable called opr and then i'm going to run a switch case on this opr basically as i told you in this particular calculator application we are supporting four operations which are addition subtraction multiplication and division so i define a case for each of the mathematical expression so you see there are four different cases here and for each case i'm initializing a class if it's a plus sign then i'm initializing the add class if it's a minus sign then i'm initializing the subtract class for multiplication i have a class called multiply 
and for division i have a class called divide let's have a look at what these classes are containing so if i go to the add class first of all it is implementing an interface called operate and this operate interface has just a single method called get results which is accepting a variable argument array if you remember i told you that you can also use a var arg array this is called a var arg expression this means that this numbers will be an array of arbitrary length it can be a one element array it can be a two element array it can be a four element array or whatever you supply but it is still going to be a fixed length array but the length is going to be dependent upon how much argument you supply to this particular method so that is what this interface operate is doing it's, it just has one method declared which is called get result which is accepting an array of numbers so if the add class is implementing the operate interface then it has to override the get result method and here it is just doing a summation of all the numbers which have been supplied so if you supply four numbers it is just going to add up those four numbers and return the sum and the exact same kind of logic or similar logic will be seen in other operate classes so if i go to the subtract class it runs the exact same operation but it subtracts the values if i go to the multiply class it is also implementing the operate interface and in the get result it is just multiplying all the values similarly in the divide class it is also implementing the operate interface and it is dividing all the numbers one by one so it's doing pretty much the same thing in terms of the expression and the logic the only difference is whether you are using an add operation or a subtract or a multiply or a divide so we have checked all these classes and the operate interface as well and let's go back to the main app now now you also see that i've defined a reference of operate here and each of the uh, switch case block i'm assigning the object type to this interface reference so i'm using the concept of dynamic binding which we talked about when we talked about interfaces that we can also do dynamic binding where we can assign an object to an interface type and the object type will depend upon the expression so once we have filled that based on the case while filtering out this expression and picking up plus star and divide sequentially then we go to the next line after outside the switch case block which is to pick the next number from the queue remember we already did one poll here so as per this example four was here in this res and now when we do this number dot poll again five will be picked up because that will be the next head of the queue so we pick up five here and then we call operate dot get result now this get result will be called based on the expression which was encountered first in the queue again looking at the example the first expression encountered will be plus so the expression was plus so the operate type object is of add type and when you call operate dot get result the get result method of add class is going to get invoked and it is going to sum four and five this rest is holding four right now based on what i described here numbers dot poll and this num is holding the the second operand basically basically five here so four plus five gets evaluated here in this case and then it again goes back here and it checks if the number queue is now empty no it is still not empty because we still have three and two left there so the, again it does the operations dot poll and it picks up multiply sign here then it again runs the switch case since it's a multiply sign it will go here and it will initialize the operate interface reference as the object of multiply class then coming here it will do a numbers dot poll and this time the numbers dot poll is going to pick up three so three will be picked up here and then the current value of result which is already nine four plus five was nine the current value of result will be updated here so rest will be nine here and num will be three here and when you call operate dot get result the multiply classes get result will get called and it will say nine into three which will become 27 it will again go back here to this particular line and it will check again if the numbers queue is now empty no it is still not empty because we still have one element left then it polls uh, the queue of the operations where the expression divide is present there which is the only element left in this particular operations queue and since we have the opr value as divide this case block gets called and the new divide class gets initialized the divide class basically gets initialized and we come here and we do numbers dot poll now the last number which is available in this queue is two which gets picked up here and then we again call operate dot get result 
this time since the operate object refer object uh, operate reference type was of divide class type so when we call operate dot get result the divide operation or the get result method of the divide class basically this method will get invoked and it will divide the current value of result which was 4 plus 5 9 into 3 which was 27 so it is going to divide 27 by 2 which was the last value of the numbers dot pole so it is it is going to execute 27 by 2 and whatever value it gets it is going to store the result uh, value back into the rest variable and then it is again going to go back here and again going to check the condition if the numbers queue is not empty but now the numbers queue is empty because 2 was the last element so it is going to come out of the loop and it is going to print the final result that is how this whole program is working now let's try to see this in action and we'll try to execute the exact same expression so if i right click and go to run as and run this as java application and i supply an expression saying 4 plus 5 star 3 divide 2 and if I now hit enter, I get the value as 13.5, which is exactly what we ran through because 4 plus 5 will be evaluated first, which will result into 9. Then 9 into 3 will be 27, and 27 divided by 2 will be 13.5 exactly. So this is how this whole program is running, where we first take the inputs and then we divide the input into numbers and operation arrays, or in fact, queues. And once we have those queues built up, then we pick up the first number and we keep running this loop till the numbers queue is not empty inside the while loop at each step we pick up the first expression or the operator we check what is the operator whether it is an addition subtraction multiplication or division operator and whatever kind of operator we have we initialize the corresponding class of it and then we fetch the next value in the numbers queue and then we call the get result based on the expression and whatever result we get from the get result we store it back into the rest variable so we keep updating the rest variable at every step that's the reason the result of 4 plus 5 gets stored in the rest and next time you are calling the get result for a multiply operation here the rest value is 9 now and it says 9 into 3 again in the next time the rest value will be updated to 27 because we are storing the result back into the result variable so this is all i want to cover in this particular session where we looked at an example of a calculator application purely from the console standpoint. Obviously, there can be a lot more stuff which we can do into this particular application, make it more error-free and cover a lot of corner cases like validating the inputs, etc. Also, uh, looking at uh, putting some conditions around the exception handling, handling the divide by zero scenario, etc., which is not here. But this is just to show you the basic idea of how you can build simple to complex CLI applications using the core Java concepts. So that's all I want to cover in this particular session. And in the next session, we are going to talk about a very interesting concept in Java, which is about enums. If you like this video, a thumbs up will be massively appreciated. And please don't forget to subscribe to Simply Code for more programming related videos. Thank you and we'll meet again in the next session.